This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. So having gone through there and looked at the reason why we have the conceptual framework and also as well why we have made updates or what the updates are, not really why we've made them, just looking at what the updates and changes are to the new version of the framework. We're now going to start looking at the chapters in detail. So first of all, we're going to go through there and look at what the objective of financial reporting is effectively within chapter one of the framework. And it starts off effectively by going through there and, and introducing us to who the users of the accounts are. So we're looking there at your investors. So your investors within equity, uh, investors in debt, if you so wish, uh, lenders. So when we're looking at lenders, we're looking at banks and other financing institutions and then your other creditors. So we're looking there at your suppliers because effectively uh, the investors, the lenders, the creditors uh, want to go through there and understand what the business is doing and how it is being managed. OK, uh, because the investors provide money, uh, the lenders provide money, the other creditors are providing short term finance. So it's important there that those users are able to make the decisions about whether or not they want to provide the finance, continue in providing the finance, or whether or not they wish to cease. Okay, uh, because effectively, you know what what they need to think about is, is initially they need to think about are they going to make that investment in the shares or in the debt? Are they going to grant the bank loan? Uh, are they going to allow short term finance? So in order to do that effectively, you need to be able to use the financial statements, don't we? So we need to look at the assets that the entity has in which regards it controls, the liabilities that it has, the amount of cash that it has within the financial statements, looking at the profits that the business is generating. So the investors get dividends out of the profit. So that's what they're going to be invested in. Uh, the lenders, the other creditors, they want their cash back, don't they? They want to look at the liquidity, the amount of cash that the business has, uh, where that liquidity is with regards to the assets. Is it all the cash tied up in inventory, that could be quite risky. Uh, so, you know, they're the looking there at the investment decisions, uh, the financing decisions, and then also then, you know, the influence on, on what management do. Uh, and that's particularly relevant with regard to other creditors recently, particularly in the UK, where businesses have been struggling. Uh, they've not been paying suppliers. They've not paid the taxes and revenue and customs have come through there and try to influence the decisions made by management by effectively saying, look, if you don't do X, Y and Z, then we're going to go through and we're going to make sure we put this business into administration. OK, uh, so, you know, the, the users will need that information. OK, we then go through and see where there's been slight changes, if you like, to the previous version of the framework, whereby we bring in this element of stewardship. Because remember, we've got these users of the financial statements, your investors, your lenders, your creditors, uh, but they're not running the business, are they? It is the directors that are running the business. Uh, they're running the business on behalf of the shareholders and they should be making decisions for the shareholders to maximise their wealth and to also consider the stakeholders as well. So the, the lenders and the, the other creditors, aren't they? Okay. So what you've got here is the framework acknowledges the fact that the users are assessing how well management are running the business. So it brings in the words management stewardship, yeah, which effectively is saying, look, the users need to be able to assess how well that business is being run. Yeah, because then what it can do is you can start to think about how well this business is going to do in the future. So the investors can think about the level of dividends they've get, uh, the potential growth in share price if it's a listed business. The lenders can think about ensuring they're going to get the cash. Similarly as well, the other creditors with regards to your suppliers and also your tax authorities as well. So the information that they need effectively are the financial statements. That's the objective of financial reporting, is it to go through there and to show a set of financial statements that will go through there and show management stewardship. The framework doesn't quite put it like that. It puts it a little bit more subtly. So it starts talking about the economic resources of the entity. So that's basically looking at your assets. The claims against the entity. So we're looking at 
your liabilities, and I suppose technically as well, uh, you could say your equity, because that's the claim that the, the shareholders have. Uh, the changes in the entity's economic resources and claims. So, you know, the changes, where do we see the word change in a financial statement title? A statement of changes in equity. So, the resource of the entity, the claims are covered effectively in the SFP. Uh, the changes are within the statement of changes in equity. And then when we're looking at the efficiency and the effectiveness of management, that's where we begin to look at the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income. Because the resources that we've used with regards to the assets and liabilities, that work and capital, non-current assets, non-current liabilities, uh, will be used to help this business generate profit. And we can see how efficient and effective they are at generating that profit. Okay. Again, if you want, technically, your change in the entity's economic resource and claims, I suppose, could also uh, look at your statements of cash flows as well. Okay.